on the other hand, smaller, simpler, easier to install <laughs> because at the end of the day, if you look at the need is bring me all the capacity at the smallest footprint. So we're here in Tel Aviv at the Saragon headquarters. I'm here with Ira. Ira, great to meet you. Welcome to Israel, Ray. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, Saragon has been uh, a player in the backhaul space for, for many years, lots of experience uh, in the market. What are you seeing right now in the industry? What are the, the, the pressures on operators? Uh, what are the main trends? The main trend I see is a continuing trend of seeing really us as users being hungry for data. Right. What I see in general is that everywhere we go, people are asking for more data, more data to what they are. What gets this a little bit more complicated when you start talking to the operators because oh, everyone is looking at 5G and what's that's going to do to us? And then the number of users will double or triple because for every one of us, there will be an IoT sure. or a robot next to us, which will be also communicating which at the end of the day increases significantly the capacity and the challenges for the operators on how to deliver all of that capacity to the different endpoints and, and end users. Okay. Now, this is also getting more uh, complicated because you want to do it in a lot more uh, with lower latency, you want to do it at higher speeds, uh, you want the reliability, the ultra reliability that you want in some of those spaces. And this sits on the operators as their main challenge in really trying to build up the food chain, the data chain, right. or serving all of those hungry endpoints uh, for more data. Sure. This is getting even more complicated because if you look at the architectures that people are looking for, means they'll need a lot more base stations or a lot of more endpoints in there. And the interesting part about those endpoints is not as much as the technology is also, where do you put them? Where is the site acquisition? Right. Are you and me allowing someone to put uh, their base station on our roof, on the neighbor roof? Is it large? Is it small? So it creates a dynamic which at the end is being translated back to the backhaul providers. Because they'll need to put the big stations and then we'll need to provide the backhauling capabilities for those endpoint base stations, small cells, remote radio heads. Pick your choice of the technology. Mm -hmm. You need to drive and make sure those points have the needed capacity so it can be delivered to us. So a, a lot more potential bottlenecks in the networks that need to be addressed to make sure that they don't exist. You mentioned 5G there and the pressures that will bring, but are the operators already having to deal with many of those challenges already with 4G and as they evolve their 4G strategies and in preparation for 5G? We look at all of it as a total continuum right. because what we are serving today is exactly the same challenges in the 4G, 4G+, 4.9G, pick your name where the operators <laughs> want to call it, yeah. which really means that you look at uh, gigabit base stations today when people are uh, putting in, you put in, uh, in a lot of small cells, you put in remote radio heads around LTE types. It's the same continuum of pressure of providing a lot more data to the endpoints, and at the, at the end of that is making sure that the capacities are there. Now, to, to achieve those or to, to meet those challenges, the operators are looking at a number of different options to introduce capacity into their networks. So what is Saragon doing to, um, to make it easy for them to plan their networks? And what kind of you know, innovations are there in the wireless backhaul worlds that are helping to ease that process? So I'll start with an example of a customer of ours, which is creating a significant disruption in the Indian market around data. They went in a strategy about four or five years ago, which started maturing about two or three years ago, where they said they want to build in a place where the hunger for data is very significant because there are almost no fixed 
uh, wireline type right. of data, and there was no very little mobile data. So I went in with the concept they're going to blanket all of India with a lot of data capacity to satisfy that hunger. They started with the basic concept we see with a lot of operators, we don't need you. And I went in again and again, and I got the answer, we don't need you. Why? We'll put everything on fiber, which is mainly our main competing technology mm -hmm. stuff. And we waited. At some point, they understood, like all operators around the world, yes, you can cover a lot of it with fiber, but there's a large percentage of the network. You can't, or you can't reliably, or you can't do it on time. And then we went back in with our innovation, which said you can do everything very quickly, very easily, with very simple solutions, which we call all our all outdoor dual capacity or multi-core capacity type of installations, okay. where you can go in and install very quickly with a very, very small footprint uh, of the equipment. Install it today in such a way you use the spectrum very efficiently today, and then double the capacity almost by a click of a button down the road, and on the same spectrum, almost again double the capacity if you need down the road further. And what we saw with them is a very, very rapid deployment. We installed with them over the last uh, two and a half years almost the same number of links that are with all the U.S. operators totally covering the U.S. in, in India. Wow. And we installed those links very quickly, brought them up. The network came up very, very quickly. And today, surprise, surprise, everyone said they won't be able to do it. They grew significantly in the number of customers. They are announced results lately profitable. And interestingly enough, the data ARPU is larger than the voice ARPU and larger than the ARPU of all the other operators. And that's the strategy. And what we do best is take our innovation in this, in this sense. Small proof footprint, very quick deployment, easier site acquisition, very high capacities, work with them to make sure that they meet their business goals which was very rapid deployments and generating enough data so they can pull in the very hunger for data which exists within the economy and turn it into significant revenues in place. Okay. You mentioned uh, the example of being able to deploy very rapidly, to be able to double capacity. This sounds like there's a lot of um, uh, maybe software defined capabilities, updates, the ability to manage capacity uh, in a much easier way than before. Is that where some before, of the innovation is coming in? Some of the innovation is, comes from what software-defined capacity, but the innovation comes in a different way from our perspective. We're quite unique in that sense that we develop our own chipsets. We have a philosophy in here which says that we control the whole value chain of the product. Right. We start with developing the chipsets, both the digital and the analog RF uh, chipsets. Okay. Then translate this into systems, software, all the way to the installation. This allows us to optimize the innovation across the different layers of the value chain so we can bring the best value to our customers at the end and really start at the really, really basics. If I look at that capability in the sense of the example that I gave, it really allowed us to build a very compact system which has multi-core inside, which can do a lot of things very, very quickly and rapidly, which then translates into the value and their benefits. Okay. And that's what we are doing uh, in all cases. Let's look at unlimited in other markets for data. Okay. And that's really upgrading uh, 4G networks to and unlimited data uh, capabilities. Let's look at it as a strategy. If we're going back four or five years, 
Uh, most operators around the world moved from unlimited to very specific data uh, packages. Mm -hmm. Again, we see today that the uh, operators are uh, fighting on the subscriber. One of the tools is the unlimited package and really driving it, which really drives a huge requirement on the network. If you look at an existing network, you now need to upgrade the network significantly. And that's where we took the innovations in similar and other directions in the ability to interface to existing towers, existing antennas, interfacing to existing systems in there, and really bringing up the capacity seamlessly within those. Okay. We are doing that also by providing all sorts of capabilities of new equipment which is coming up, which is allowing to use different spectrum areas. If we used classical microwave, then there's a millimeter waves that allow us to do a lot more capacities in there, interface those systems into existing systems that right. exist there today. All of that to really come back and allow people like Unlimited to really drive and be able to provide the capacities to the end users uh, that they need. Well, it sounds like you have a lot planned, but you know your roadmap to be able to address the, the operator's needs. So it sounds like it's going to be a very interesting next few years for, for Saragon as, as 5G becomes a, a reality. It's been a f very f uh, interesting years over the last <laughs> few years, and I think it will continue. And I think it will continue the success we're having within the market as being the largest uh, number one independent out there being able to really drive and pull the market throughout technology and innovation, which we see being uh, over time slowly uh, also appearing with some of our other competitors. <laughs> right. Well, that's a validation. If, that's a if, very good validation. Yeah, absolutely. Aria, that's great. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, Ray. Thank you. Thank you for coming.